Today I'm going to talk about three aspects of aggregation. Uh, we're going to aggregate the impacts of climate change over time, and that's under the heading of discounting. We're going to aggregate the impacts of climate change over different people, and that's the aspect of equity. And we're going to aggregate the impacts of climate change over alternative futures, possible futures, and that's under the heading uh, of risk. Um, in the first couple of weeks we talked about the uh, about greenhouse gas emission reduction. In uh, the next block we talked about the impacts of climate change. And then last week we put the costs of greenhouse gas emission reduction and the benefits of greenhouse gas emission reduction, the avoided impacts uh, of climate change together in a uh, cost-benefit analysis. Uh, but we never much talked about what do we really mean by optimality. Um, and that is uh, the topic of today. Uh, and then next week we're going to do away with the assumption that there is one single social planner and we're going to look at what happens when there's multiple uh, social planners. Uh, but today we're going to talk about uh, discounting equity and risk or what do we mean by optimality. I'm going to do so in five chapters, not in three as you may have guessed. Uh, the time aspect is going to be split into two because it's the longest uh, and then in the uh, very end I'm going to add a chapter on putting discounting equity and risk uh, together and also talk about how do we actually choose these uh, particular uh, parameters. Uh, but we're going to start with uh, the Ramsey rule. <coughs> um, the thesis I'm going to defend, try and defend uh, today, is that if you do not care about the distant future, faraway lands and remote probabilities, then perhaps you need not care that much about climate change. Uh, and that follows from the first statement. The first statement is just factual. Climate change is a long-term problem. Climate change is a global problem. And climate change is an uncertain problem. And there's very few people who would dispute any of these uh, statements. Um, and from that follows, and that is controversial, uh, that actually our main concern for climate change lie in the further future lie in what happens in poorer countries, we talked about that last, uh, the weeks before last, um, and what happens in the tails of the distribution. We also uh, touched on that uh, already. Um, and that is uh, what I'm going to try and convince you of, that that really is where our concerns for climate change lie, and I'm going to start by talking about the distant future. Discounting over time is typically done according to the so-called uh, Ramsey rule, named after Frank Ramsey, who you see here. Uh, Frank was a brilliant economist, or had a really bright future. He uh, was a professor of economics at a young age uh, at Cambridge, wrote a couple of uh, fantastic papers, and then he committed suicide, so we never know what would have been, uh, what would have been the faith of economics. Um, had he had chosen to live longer. Uh, the Ramsey rule was posited in a paper he wrote in 1928, and it actually took until the early 60s uh, before the economics profession was at the same level of mathematical proficiency as Ramsey was in the 1930s. <coughs> um, so, yeah, really a man well ahead of his time. Um, the uh, Ramsey rule of discount holds that the consumption rate of discounting R equals the pure rate of time preference rho plus uh, the growth rate of consumption G times the curvature of the utility function or the rate of risk aversion uh, eta, the relative rate of risk aversion. Um, this this follows from uh, a mathematical analysis, essentially an Euler uh, equation, um, but it's also fairly uh, intuitive and it can be shown uh, graphically. Um, and uh, the second component of the Ramsey rule uh, of discount is that we discount the future because we will be richer and happier in that future. Uh, and that can be shown uh, graphically. 
Uh, so what you see here is a utility function where utility is on the uh, vertical axis and consumption is on the horizontal axis. Um, and the question is how would you evaluate a savings decision? And savings, essentially what you do is you give up some, uh, some of your current consumption, you save more and therefore you consume less, um, and in return you will have higher consumption in the future when you take savings out of the bank and you uh, use it for something that at that time uh, you are particularly interested uh, in. <coughs> um, and the question is, is this a good deal? Uh, so the trade-off that you see here is that uh, today, when you're uh, relatively poor, you reduce your uh, consumption. So you move slightly to uh, the right, and as a result, your utility falls. And then in return, in a future point, when presumably you're richer because your income uh, has grown, and definitely if you're a student uh, <coughs> in the final year, uh, you can assume that your income uh, will grow fairly rapidly. Uh, so in the future, if there's no interest uh, on your savings, um, then your consumption slightly increases, you move to the right, um, and as a result, you will be happier, your uh, utility increases. Now, if you are in your situation where your income is increasing fairly rapidly, then the gain in utility will be small because you're adding income to a richer future self. Um, whereas the drop in utility from taking away consumption now from your poorer current self uh, is actually a fairly large drop in utility. So this is a bad deal. Just sticking uh, money on your mattress even in the absence uh, of inflation is just a bad idea because you're transferring money from your current poor self to a future, hopefully, uh, richer self. And really, uh, this decision to save is only uh, a good idea if the future gaining utility is at least as large as the current drop in utility. Uh, so in the first picture that I showed, the uh, two bars were of equal size in the horizontal dimension. Uh, in the current graph that you're looking at, uh, the two bars are of equal size in the vertical dimension. <coughs> you are indifferent in terms of utility. Um, now, this explains the second component of the Ramsey rule. Um, the size of the uh, vertical bars depend on two things. One, how fast is your consumption increasing? How fast are you growing richer? Uh, and the second is what is the curvature of the utility function? And if the utility function were linear, then it actually doesn't, uh, then the consumption. And then uh, the growth rate of utility is equal to the growth rate uh, of uh, consumption and your eta is one um, but if you are uh, risk averse if you um, do care more about a dollar when you're poor than uh, you care about the dollar when you rich when you're rich um, then uh, you would need to move much further to the right in the future to have the same utility gain as you would lose utility and uh, now uh, so that is the uh, second component of uh, the Ramsey rule <coughs> transferring money to a future richer self is simply a bad deal because it doesn't count as much <coughs> so that is what the eta g stands for uh, where g is the growth rate of consumption uh, and eta is uh, the curvature of the utility function so that eta g is the growth rate of happiness um, the second uh, component of the Ramsey rule and I'll come back to that in a minute uh, is that it's essentially a measure of our impatience we discount the future 
because it's the future. We care less about the future than we care about uh, the present. <coughs> uh, this derivation of the Ramsey rule is essentially one that is purely based on uh, decisions about consumption and saving. Um, of course, an economy is uh, in some sort of uh, equilibrium. It's not just that the capital, the uh, capital market, uh, depends on our supply of savings, right? Um, it also depends on what you actually do with the money. Um, if the economy is in a dynamic equilibrium, then uh, this all goes through, and uh, the consumption side of discounting equilibrates with uh, the uh, production uh, side of discounting. Um, this is terribly important for a problem uh, like uh, climatic change. Uh, what you're looking at here uh, is a fairly small graph because it will be compared uh, to other graphs later. Um, uh, this is uh, the same graph but now a bit bigger. Uh, what you're looking at uh, on the uh, horizontal, on the vertical axis, sorry is the social cost of carbon, how much we would want to tax carbon, is it a good tax? That's essentially a measure of our concern for uh, climate change or our willingness to pay for climate policy if you want. Um, and on the um, horizontal axis you're looking at the ETA parameter, the rate of risk aversion, the curvature of the utility function. Now what do you see? Uh, Ramsey rule is that the discount rate is rho plus eta g. Uh, we assume a constant. Um, no, we assume a fixed um, uh, rate of consumption growth. So g is the same in all scenarios that we're looking at here. Um, the first thing that you see is that the green curve lies above the blue curve, lies above the brown curve. And uh, PRTP is the row uh, that you're looking at, so it's the pure rate of time preference. And what you see is that the higher the row, the lower the social cost of carbon. So the more impatient we are, the uh, less we care about the future. The less we care about the future, the less we care about climate change, because it's a future problem. And the less we care about climate change, the lower the social cost of carbon, the lower the tax we want to slap uh, on our greenhouse gas emissions. And that is what you see. The green curve lies above the blue curve, lies above the brown curve. Uh, so that is the effect of the pure rate of time preference. Uh, and then the graph shows also what happens if we increase the curvature of the utility function. Um, if uh, we have uh, zero, uh, then it's only the uh, row that matters, but the greater uh, the eta, the greater the curvature of the utility function, the larger our rate of risk, rate of rel relative rate of risk aversion, and uh, the lower the social cost of carbon becomes because we discount the future harder. Um, so this is exactly uh, what you would expect. And what you see is that it makes a big difference. The uh, larger social cost of carbon that you see here is 300 and it goes to practically zero. Um, so this particular choice of parameter uh, matters. Um, now what do we do uh, with this impatience? What do we do um, with the row? Uh, and there is a long and controversial debate uh, about this. And when I mean long debate, this debate has been going on since at least uh, the time of the ancient, ancient Greeks. So this has been going on for 3,000 years or so. Um, and uh, why is uh, impatience so controversial? Uh, because on the one hand, we are all impatient. If I give you the choice between watching the next episode of Better Call Saul today or next Tuesday, if you're a fan, you would say, give it to me today. Even though it will be just as good next week, because they've recorded it already, right? Nothing will change. The episode will be exactly the same whether you see it today uh, or uh, next week, you would still want to see it today. 
even though the amount of happiness you derive is the same. You actually argued that if you see it next week, it's much better because you can share uh, your joy with your friends. If I show it to you today, you have to sign a non-disclosure agreement. Um, but still, if I give you that choice, you would say, give it to me now. Um, and it's not just anecdotal evidence like this, um, that I want the good things and I want them now. Uh, it, there is tons of observational evidence, tons of experimental evidence that people discount uh, the future. Uh, at the same time, you shouldn't. We shouldn't be impatient. There is no reason to say that the future is less important than today just because it is the future. It's a lack of imagination. Yeah. And it's also, um, regardless of your religious belief, regardless of uh, the ethics you adhere to, every ethical system, every major religion says we should not be impatient. We should, uh, we should be patient, we should care as much about the future as we care about today. Um, and this is particularly important if we talk about the very long run, where it's not so much about trading off our current welfare against our own future welfare, but essentially if you're talking about a multi-generational problem like climatic change, Essentially what you say when you discount is that people who are born later than me are worth less than me. And if you phrase it like that, then it becomes clear immediately that this is a very particular position uh, to hold.